Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a regularly scheduled meeting of Sunderland Board of Selectmen. We've had an entire two weeks since our last meeting. So much to do. The town is so <laughs> in many pieces because they're working on sidewalks that's in the right. town. So I think that's a good thing. Um, so you'll notice, the town will notice, people in town will notice that they're digging up uh, the west side of South Main Street, east side, excuse east me, east side of side. South Main Street, replacing the sidewalks there, extending the sidewalks down to um, uh, Sugarloaf Estates. All the way to Sugarloaf Estates, 4,000 feet. 4,000 feet, they're actually gonna do both sides of, uh, both sides of uh, uh, South Main Street. In addition, they're renovating a couple sidewalks but beside the sidewalks, they're also renovating a few couple crosswalks, and they're installing some bus shelters. That came through a grant um, that we received. Sherry? Complete Streets grant, um, the amount of 396000 something. So when, when you go outside and look and see all that work being done, it was uh, it's $396,000 worth of work that we set out for competitive bid and the the um, work is being done by Taylor Davis and they came in under bid right. under the quoted price um, so that's a good thing um, but that's three hundred ninety six thousand dollars of work that you're being seen done outside there that was done through a state state grants that that uh, that was applied for that tax dollars didn't have to be spent on well, your local tax dollars, it's still tax dollars. So that, that's ongoing. Um, we also have work, sidewalk work going ongoing on Hadley Road. Um, it's a little standstill right now because we're uh, discussing with one landowner um, the best way to, to, to work around a, uh, the survey came out on, on some of their property. So we're working on that, but the landowner is very uh, amenable to uh, trying to work something out. So we may have a special town meeting. One option is having a special town meeting in the fall time, um, but we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep working on that. Um, also, I don't, I don't know if anybody's been down to the river on the boat launch, but the uh, boat launch is in, um, it's paved. There's nice turnaround, there's handicapped parking. Um, that was done through a grant as well. Um, and that was, I would think it was around 200 and something thousand, right? Almost for the park grant? For the- Or for the, the boat launch the piece? The boat, um, boat ramp. That comes, from, that comes from license fees for the, the folks who do yep. hunting and fishing. But you're right, it's a little over $200,000. That's over $200,000. So in case you're keeping track out there, that's $600,000 that was that's being spent in town this year by uh, by grants and that's not counting the green energy um, that we've got 129,000 this year for green communities it's 129,000 and so there are about 630,000 thousand dollars right there of grant money that mm -hmm. came into the town a park grant as well and the park grant which we haven't haven't worked on yet, so. We have an IT grant. We've been very fortunate yeah. this year, so. so we're we pushing, have... this year alone, we're pushing almost three quarters of a million dollars in park grant. Now, we don't toot our horn that often, but I would just like to say, Sherry, nice job, and the people that you work with, they're bringing those grants into town. Yeah, there's a lot of people involved in that, so. There, there's a lot of people, but, so, so that's almost three quarters of a million dollars, and, and, and sometimes people say, well, what, 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 why do you need staff? Right. Right. Yeah. right. Why do you need staff? Right. And we could uh, have Sherry work for 10 years and we'd, we'd, we'd still wouldn't get what we got back. We wouldn't pay her what we're getting for this year right. and grants alone. Good point. Mr. Sillen's here so we can continue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to buy time. <laughs> All right. First order of business that we have tonight um, is... Mark Capadonna yes. is, going to, is from the Colonial Power Group, and we're, he's going to come talk to us about the Franklin County Electricity Aggregation Project. We'll probably have to get an acronym for that someday soon, won't we? 
Mark, why don't you come? You seem to be a fart. Long ways away today, aren't they? They put a dance floor in. I'm telling you, just like I the know. Cajun dance music yesterday at the Green River. <laughs> You'll be able to hit me, no problem. All right, shoot. <laughs> I promise you that. The, see, the, the, uh, the board op behind there, if the board op has a problem, she'll hit you in the back of the head with an apple. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay. It'll be all good. And, and she, she wasn't a very effective softball player, so <laughs> I wouldn't let her get up and do an underhand pitch because she'd knock you over. But go ahead, Mark. Mark Capito on a Colonial Power at uh, out of Five Mount Royal Ave Ball Romance. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the chosen consultant for the FERCOG uh, RFP for municipal aggregation. That's why I'm in front of you here tonight. Um, we spoke with Sherry about kind of the process that the town of Gill uh, participated in that RFP and uh, wanted to move forward with aggregation. You passed it at town meeting. Um, so the heavy lift is already over for the town. So I left a sheet in front of each one of you who's just kind of talk about process. And I guess I should take a half step back and say what we're talking about here is the supply side of your Eversource electricity bill. So municipal aggregation, what is it? That's everyone that's still on basic service, pooling all those customers together, taking them out to the marketplace for energy of your liking. If you want to do a long-term stable rate, you can do that. You want to add a green, green clean component, you can do that as well. You want to do something short, you can do that. It kind of puts the power in your hands. It allows you to do what the town's people are looking for. The good news is you're truly only bringing a choice. The way the plan is written, free opt-in, free opt-out, and unlimited opt-in and opt-outs. So you're just going to bring them a choice that they haven't had in the past. Um, moving forward, what exactly is aggregation and how exactly does it work? So aggregation. You've already taken the first step, and literally that's the most difficult step. For you, the next step is nothing more than a contract with Colonial so that we can move forward and take you through that the local state process before you get an order or an approval from the Department of Public Utilities, and then we can get out to the marketplace. So the next step is simply contractual. I don't know, Sherry, if you've showed them kind of that kind of standard forming content that kind of all the other towns in FERCOG have agreed to. Um, after that's signed, we'll get you a uh, Sherry a plan. That plan just needs to be hung for 15 business days uh, with some language. So that if anyone wants to comment on that, we can get their comments back. After that, this board would vote on that plan. After the, after the plan is approved by the, uh, the Board of Selectmen, it's a simple, uh, I'll call it a consultation meeting with the Department of Energy Resources. The Department of Energy Resources that calls about 15 or 20 minutes long. After that, Denise will put together a full filing. This is Denise Allard from Colonial Power Group, I by the way. <laughs> and uh, th that, that's where we kind of lose control of the process. By lose control, I mean it's now in a state agency where we can control the process when it's locally. We cannot control it um, once it gets to the state. As soon as we file that, they will uh, set up a uh, public hearing, a conveniently located in South Station in their offices. No reason for you to go, Colonial will go on your behalf. No one will show. It takes about three minutes. Anyone to speak for, anyone to speak against. They close the public hearing. They move on, they'll ask a few questions. We call them interrogatories. Colonial will answer those questions, showing you what all the answers are. Once that comes back, within a month or two, we normally get a what they call an order, but all that is is the approval process. At that point, that's when it begins. It allows you. All you then have is a plan that you can go out to the marketplace. And then we would meet with whoever is required in town. What is it the town's looking for from an energy standpoint? Do they want to have a, a, a green product? Do they want to have a three-year stable rate? Do they want to have uh, a, an, an opt-in product? Do they want to have a solar? We can have all of those discussions and a bunch more. Are there solar projects that you're looking to develop in town that? The aggregation is going to need those attributes anyways. We can use those to help finance those kind of projects. So down the road, there's lots that aggregation can do. And truly, it, it's a flexibility thing that if someone doesn't like the aggregation, they simply sign the card they're never in it to begin with. That, it's that simple. They could call us. They go on the internet and opt out. That's not a problem. But the people that want to participate, they can participate and stay in the program. I would say 
the thing that you're going to want to know because it's your phones that are going to be ringing. Once we get an order, how do we educate everyone on this? So let's just say we have a contract between you and supplier XYZ. That gets signed. There's a 30-day opt-out, meaning that everyone that has a meter is going to receive a letter. It's going to state clear as day, here's the basic service rate, here's the town's rate. If you wish to participate, you don't have to do anything. If you want to opt out, you can sign the card, call Colonial, or simply go on the internet and opt out right on our website. At that same time, we have an article in the newspaper, mention it here at the select board meeting, and then hopefully uh, um, the local cable, you could run a, a PSA at the same time, so that someone will be receiving something in the newspaper, I should be receiving something in the mail, see it in the newspaper, hopefully catch it on, on the local cable station. So we found that the most effective way, it's difficult to educate ahead of, ahead of time, Wait till it might be six to eight months before we get an order. So we'll probably lose everyone's attention there for a little while. Once we get an order and you've move, decided to move forward, that, then we start the education problem, uh, process in earnest. And that's kind of aggregation 101 in a nutshell. If I could, Mr. Chair? Sure. So, uh, Mark, when you were talking about uh, receiving an order, that's essentially a green lighting from DOER. A DPU, that's correct. DPU, I'm sorry. Yep, not a problem. Apologize. Yes. Yep. Okay. That's the green light from the They call it an order, yep. but it's your approval. Sure. Yes. Got it. Uh, ma major concerns I've heard from people is the, the opt, you know, having to opt out versus opt in. And that, and, and education, I think it'd be a big component in that. Yeah. So, the, and again, like I said, before anyone was moved, we would have a, a campaign to educate, meaning there's going to be an article in the local newspaper, there's going to be something sent to each and every meter. If you have two meters at your house that you're paying for, you'll get two pieces of mail. And it will explain, it's not our, all our words, it's not a marketing piece. The uh, consumer division at the Department of Public Utilities requires this language, some things bolded, some things not bolded, so forth and so on. There's just not a lot of leeway, so it's kind of a straightforward Note just to let you know what, what the program is. And again, you let me know when you want to, if after you had signed something, and I want to state this. We have clients that have been two years plus that have had a, an approved aggregation that have decided not to move forward for whatever reason. There's no problem with that. Just because you get an approval doesn't mean you need to sign. It's ultimately your aggregation plan, and you decide when, when it's going to move forward. I could, Mr. Chair. So, Mark, as you talk about it being uh, your plan, you're pointing at the boards. Obviously, the board has a signing authority, but you're also working uh, collectively with the uh, Regional Council of Governments. Yes. And as the choice of the Regional Council of Governments, you're still doing individual municipal agreements. Individ that's correct. That's, that's important for me to just put out there. Yeah, absolutely correct statement. Correct. We're all individual towns. So and the reason we do that, we're still using the aggregate load in case everyone wants to go together. Yeah. But you're going to still retain your full autonomy. Mm -hmm. Say we went out with 12, 12, 12 of the uh, towns. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, you didn't like the price or you didn't like the terms, you could say, at this point, Gil is not interested in moving forward. It's Sutherland. Sutherland. I don't know why I said Gil. I apologize. <laughs> they're, just, they're, they're just north of us. <laughs> yeah, but Sutherland decides not to move forward, and the other 11 could move forward. Good thing. Good thing you brought her. <laughs> Believe me, you have no idea. <laughs> um, I, I guess one of the one of the things that that I, I everybody that owns a dog, under I thought understood that they would they have to get a license for that dog. That's funny. Right? I, I hear you. It's, 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 and now, we're now, past dog, call, dog tag season, but it's, it's an annual event. Okay. <laughs> it now, really is. Now, the, the town clerk, I, I can't think of how many pieces of literature go out yep. in the mail about dog licenses. Yep. Um, we have it on the web page. Yep. Um, we have mailings with town meeting notifications. Mm -hmm. and, and, robo and, calls. Oh, robo calls. <laughs> We we do census. every census. We I can't think of all the ways that the town clerk has 
has tried to convey to people that if you have a dog, you have to have it licensed. It's not our rules. It's the state. The state. The state says you have to register. And part of it is because of the rabies, and you're supposed to have to check the rabies certificates and all that kind of good stuff. But I, I, I can understand maybe the first person first that, that comes from Wyoming moves into Sunderland, and they say they may not have known about it, and they may have not gotten the eight pieces of mail and the, the robocalls and everything. And, and I can maybe understand that. But after the first year, and I can tell you, we still have... Bunch, bunches of people that forget, that's the right term, right? Forget? Conveniently forget. Conveniently forget that they had, and so they put the town clerk in a very untenable position of trying to, um, so I, I would say the more that we can do on notification of people in town that this is going to happen, and while you may not be starting yet to, to get the order from the DPU. You know, it'd be nice to if we put something on the web page. If you had something on the web page that we could, and it's kind of like the precursor, just hey, people start thinking about this. You know, start start actually understand it's your choice and start looking instead of just going going along. You know, whatever whoever the provider is that assigned to you, maybe it's a good thing that people start looking and f trying to figure out. You know, why they're buying electricity from a certain vendor and and, it's a, and, and could they be saving money? Because um, my, 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 my nightmare is that somebody um, wakes up on the day after they get the first electric bill and say, well, who the hell's Colonial Power and what did them damn selectmen do to get me into this mess? Because um, that will happen. Oh, yeah, that will happen. It, it absolutely, so the one thing I want to say is hopefully the clerk will get the call and the clerk will then give them our 1-800 number, they'll call us and we'll explain the program to them and what, they're, what they can and cannot do. So we, yeah, we're, we have really a call center that will, we've been answering municipal aggregation is calls. It a US, is it a U.S. call center? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. yes, it is. Very important to us as well. I agree. So I can tell you that I can't stop the call from coming, people asking is this legitimate or not, Makes but sense. we can answer the question. Yeah, I, I just and, and again for me it's it's trying to make sure that we get get the information out as soon as possible and as many times as possible. Just and again, you're right. It, but if we get if we can get at least a one third penetration, I mean, and and that's our bane also is is how how to how to penetrate. So you know, get that word out there to people. And we we would take direction from you if you have like that robocall was extremely. Uh, I live in a, a, a city called Marlboro, just east of here, yep. and uh, they did a robocall and it worked fantastically. Other towns don't like to use that reverse 911 yeah. for anything other than emergency because they feel like they're overburdening them, mm -hmm. but the city of Marlboro uses it for informational reasons as well, That's right. and it was extremely effective. Mm -hmm. Our phone rang off the hook for two or three days, nice. which is a good thing. That's a good thing. That means we're at least getting some people's attention. Yeah, and, 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 it, and it's not just with aggregation of power. I mean, the, the city of Newton's working through a um, an MWRA grant right now, where they're where they're giving money to re remove lead um, connections to the to the public water supply. Now, what they'll do is they'll go in, they'll they'll do the work. They they charge a set fee, and and it gives the homeowners three years at no charge to. And no interest to to replace the the lead service to give healthy water, and people refuse that. Don't ask me why, but I just. But but we know that they do, and not Correct. and not everybody thinks alike. So no, the, no, the and better notification. The, if, and I think the the hot button item, sir. It's truly it's an opt out. So someone gets that envelope and says, ah, "I'm not interested," and throws it away. They'll be enrolled in the program. They can opt out at any time. We're not going to start a program where you're above basic service. That wouldn't be prudent to begin. You're not going to charge you five hundred dollars to get out. No, 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 no fee or penalty to leave or come back. So you're truly bringing a choice. The issue is, is the state's uh, the law one sixty four one thirty four is written by energy people so that they can bid on the load. Okay. That's why it's an opt out. Even if you're saving people money, you will hear that I didn't authorize you to switch me, even though you've saved me money. 
that complaint oh. still. Yeah. Yeah. We're still very independent out here. Yep. Yes. Yep. No. Yep. That happens in all of and, and 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 yep. you know we still have a lot of people pay their tax bill. They want they want to go in with the cash and they not by check. They right. want to pay cash to the to the to the treasurer and the tre counts out the dollar bills to get to the because that's the way they've always done it. So right. and, nothing and wrong with that. You no, know, it's the way they do business and that. But it's that's what happens. And although we're we're a small town. We're around a lot of big towns, but In little. Big towns, it happens. It happens across the board. You know, I get my electricity from other sources. I want to continue to get my electricity. Yeah. You know, not, even right. if I'm and, paying more money. Yep. And that's a choice that they get Absolutely. to keep. Absolutely. I I wish more people would pay their tax bills instead of letting the banks do it, so they could actually see mm -hmm. what's being charged. So, and I think if they took their paychecks and they had to give a check back to the federal government every two weeks or every week. I think they would be really surprised. So. Really, really surprised. Well, that's only my, the only I thing I see. I'd certainly, be surprised. I think so. All right, where do we need to go to next? Yes, two questions, Mr. Oh, Chair. Please. So we've talked about uh, adoption at the town level. We talked about uh, a plan submitted to DPU, and the question I have is: We've already gone through decoupling. What what's the what are the steps for the plan which we're submitting right is we going to be submitted for approval yes what what does the plan what's it comprised of is it percentages of aggregate percentages of purchasing if 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 I want to go all you know hard carbon coal energy how do I do that yep. so the plan is completely silent on any of that because that's the deregulated piece. Yeah. The plan runs through, I call it the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It says who's going to do what, what the costs are, uh, how things are going to work administratively. Other than that, mm -hmm. that's what the plan is. As long as your plan shows that you're uh, taking care of all of the issues, and this plan has been filed some 70 other times. It's been very refined. So is the plan, what you're describing, if I could, Mr. Chair, is what you're, plan. it's the business plan. It's essentially the, deli I mean, the it, delivery yes. piece of it, not did, you know, did penguins die in the purchase of this electricity? That's none of that. Right. None of that. That you're going to decide after you get the order how you want to proceed in the deregulated marketplace for your energy. Okay, so now how does that plan get developed? So it's not so much a plan as, as it is a discussion yeah. on what you're looking for, and then I'm going to bring you back what you're looking for. And is that, now I'm going to use the word aggregation in, in, in this, you know, representative republic form of government that we have here. Is that a, a function of all of the contributors or participants all weighing in on it? Or is this something the Board of Selectmen weigh in on with your guidance? So you'd have to sign off on it. So well, I don't the, know well, you, the, the it, the it yeah. hasn't been decided yet. And that's my, that's my point. How does the it get decided? So I don't know who I would meet with from the town yeah. and have that consensus be made. We're looking for, I'm making this up. Yeah. I just want to, I'm making yeah. this up. We're looking for a, a, a mass class two renewable, uh, a hydro product out of Maine. Sure. 80% uh, covering everything other than RPS. And we're, we'd like to see the terms of six, 12, 18, 24 months, and we'll have all the suppliers there. We'll show you a standard product just because it's just a standard product. We'll show you that. And if you wanted to see some other product, we'll show you that as well. So this is the mutual fund for electricity. That's exactly correct. It's your decision on what you're looking for. You get to decide, and then I'm going to go into the marketplace and bring you that product. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. What's that? Uh, I have one other question, if it's, if it's, it's okay. Sure. Uh, can you, as I know you're working as consultant for the COG, and I mean, appreciate that, covering the area that the COG has gotten municipalities to sign up with. My question is, what other towns uh, does Colonial currently represent and how is the rollout gone? What's your duration and how's it gone? So, uh, 
and Denise is going to help me with the other towns. So I Thanks, respect Denise. this. You know, Marlboro is a long ways away. It is. You have to go all, all the way, way over down. there. Exactly right. <laughs> he was asking. Yeah. He understands the fur dog. Oh, the yeah. other towns. Yeah. 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 So there's a lot of. Um, yeah, there's a lot of area out here. <laughs> well, there's a lot of towns too. So I didn't want. I don't want to miss any. I can run through the ones that I know in this area. But well, this is mainly historic, babe. From your, from your, if, if you were interviewing for us, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about Colonial. Give us one or two successes Colonial's had in other towns, and what pitfalls have you run into? And I know you're working for the COG, I get it. <laughs> but right now, people in Sunderland can watch this. Absolutely, so, so the process up until, we have control locally, right? Yeah. If, if we hang the plan three weeks, we'll call the DOER after that, after that period. Expect it to be about a month later, we get a meeting with the DOER. And that's when things get a little foggy from our standpoint. We can't dictate to the DPU how quickly things go through. Sure. It used to be as, as small as three months. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I'll call it workload or other priorities, the DPUs, uh, the last time we went out, we were about eight months deep. Yeah, yeah. It took about eight and a half months to get our water out of them. Sure. After that, it's actually in the town's hand how swiftly we move to the next step, meaning a procurement. Mm -hmm. I would expect over the next, after we get an order, within the next month, we get out to the marketplace and take a look. It really depends on when that order comes and what we're looking to do with um, Eversource. If we're close to an Eversource, before we get out to bid, we would like you to know what that Eversource rate is so that we know the price to be. Yep, yep. That way there you guys are making a Monday morning quarterback decision. Eversource is at 10 cents, your rate is 9 cents, guaranteed out of the gate you're at six months worth of savings. That isn't an issue, depends if your, if your contract goes long. As far as certain successes, I'm going to name towns in the, in the general, yep. okay. general area. Yep. So I'm in, in the Berkshires, our towns are Florida, uh, Clarksburg, uh, North Adams, Williamstown, uh, New Ashford, Cheshire, uh, Pittsfield, Lenox, uh, come down to West Stockbridge, then down, down south it's uh, Egremont. Uh, New Marlboro, uh, Sheffield, and uh, Sandsfield. Nice. Those are kind of, and then up, he, he got them. Yeah, yeah. Nice. He's Good job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Burnston. Up, yeah. Up, up yeah, we have Burnston, Orange, Heat. Mm -hmm. um, Wendell. Orange. And, and so, so these these uh, municipalities you're you're mentioning have been in the program that Colonial is operating, aggregating. Yes. How, have, how has that gone? So it's, it's gone extremely well for the communities out here. So in Pittsfield, I'm just gonna, they were looking to do something local and green. Yep. So they have a 25% SREC 2 product. They buy 25% 25 more SREC 2s than required by state mandate. And their price for the next three years is 9975 with 25% more SREC tubes. Hmm. So they have a stable price under 10 and it's for 36 months. Nice. So they feel real good about that. They're also helping local jobs and things of that nature, as well as reducing you know, their carbon footprint for everyone in town or city. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. <laughs> you had one point, next steps. Mm -hmm. For here, it would be simply a signature of the contract we would get Sherry, and I believe she has it. I have, I have not sent it yet. I'm, I'm sorry. just waiting for tonight. Okay, so we'd get her the plan and, and what she needs to do to hang that plan. Mm -hmm. That would go on the website and down to the clerk. So if people wanted to make a comment, they certainly can. We'll, we'll, we'll complete that as part of our filing. <clears throat> and then after that, we're under that DOER and DPU. Mm -hmm. After that's been hung for three weeks, this body would be asked to vote on the plan. And once approved, that's when we can move the DOER. One other question, Mr. Chair. Promise? Promise. Just okay. So is this, this plan is submitted and uh, managed by uh, Colonial. I get my invoice. It comes in once a month. Does it say Colonial on it? Nope. Nope. It says wherever it comes from. Nope. nope. It says Eversource. So Got the it. line item yep. change, rather than, rather than it saying uh, generation services, mm -hmm. basic service rate, it's going to say, I'm just going to say Constellation or yep. XYZ supplier. Yep. You'll still pay your bill the same. If you're on a budget bill, you still have budget billing. If you receive a low income discount, you'll still get the discount. Right. If automatic withdrawal, you'll still have all of those benefits. Okay. So it's a single line item of change. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay. So I guess so you're, you need to get some stuff to Sherry for us to take a look at then. Of the contract? Comment. The contract. Yeah. It's been reviewed by council and approved. So Good. it's ready for your signature if you are ready to sign. Okay. I'll wait till Davey comes in for the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we just missing one. Understood. No. So something like that, we'd have him here for it also. Makes perfect sense. Okay. I'm on it. Thank you very much. Anything else? Mark? No. Did you ask your partner there? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Um, I can, if you'd like, Sherry, I can send you over the ad plan anyway, just so you have it. If you want to take a look, okay. just while you're waiting, we can certainly provide it to you. Yeah, that'll be good. Any interruption? Yep. So you know, I, I get, thing, you can kind of I, We'd have to. We'd have to. I would. I would assume that we would sit down with our energy committee also and talk about what, yep. you know, what options they they're looking at and see if we can fit those into the plans and and what it would cost for our for our, uh, you know, residents as well. So, and so. Yeah, I mean, then it's just sit down and the negotiation part. You know, what 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 can we make up? You know, what, what would be the best plan for everybody of concern? And if the energy committee would like us, that's what you hired us to do. Yeah, right. We're happy to come down and have a conversation with the energy committee as well. I think that's kind of well, what we do. And 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 again, if somebody and again, if someone wants to go 100% renewable resources, they can they can pick out a provider that can offer that. Um, but somebody, you know, maybe we can look at different plans so that we're, like you said, like Pittsfield did, where they they try to balance the local jobs with their carbon footprint, et cetera. So, sure. Okay. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but you could have it. Your plan allows for an opt-in, so you could say the standard product is going to be standard yep. power, and then the opt-in is going to be 100% green. This is at price A, this is at price B. <laughs> So the, the the one thing though is is like right now, if you have a contract that says you're tied in your three year program, you're going to have to opt out of the program when it's offered to you. You will not. So only people on basic service right. are going to be part of the program. So if you're already on a contract, three year contract with um, X Y Z supplier for green power, yep, you you won't even receive the mail. We won't even get your information. Because you've already made a choice. This is only for people on basic service. Oh. They can always join the program, but if we switch that customer, we would be slamming that customer. So those customers will not be included. Util the, yeah, the utility won't give us that information. That's correct. One more? Yeah, one more. So as you described that, I, I, have, I have a single family residence just down the street. Yes. How is that relationship with this process different than? The municipal relationship with the power that the municipality or a commercial store right in the corner what's so, that relationship so there, there wouldn't be any difference it would be every meter in town mm -hmm. if you were on basic service we would receive that information mm -hmm. the town could participate if they so desired or you might say uh, for budgetary reasons we'd like to your load profile is a little stronger than a regular residential load you might get a little bit better pricing that way and then you could do a little bit uh, different for budget but the account, when it came off that contract, it could absolutely join the aggregation. You can join or, or leave at any time, free of... So, so we're not necessarily talking here about every meter in the town of Sunderland? Every meter on basic service. On basic service. Yes. So if you have, a, but, you have an extended contract, you have a commercial, you've got an R1, you've got all those kinds of fun things, they're not part of the initial discussion correct they could always join so that I program hear. what we do ask and this is part of that informational important. session it is very important check your contract to right. make sure leaving that we will not have a, a fee or penalty yeah. but if you leave that there may be a fee or penalty to that private contract you signed correct i, I thought we were told differently in the beginning i wanted we? to clarify that point <laughs> Yeah, because we were told differently in the beginning. That's why. That's why I kind of brought it up. Okay. Yeah. Because that we were kind of told that everybody would be swapped over, and you would have to opt out. Not the case. Okay. We wouldn't even receive those those customers. Good, Cherry. Um, so right now, that all the town buildings are with uh, public like, power. Uh -huh. Public power. Yeah. Until December, and so we've gone out to bid with the um, Paul Schroeder's group. Mm -hmm. There, I can't yep. think of the name of it. And so now I have a quote um, for 
uh, one, two, and three years for supplier services. And Mark and I talked a little bit about that because there are um, penalties if you breach the contract, okay. right. of course. So we were wondering, I was wondering what would be the happy medium at the best price for us while we're getting this program going. Um, so there's a 24 month um, program and IGS is the um, low bidder. Um, and it's um, about 10 cents. So it's up from last year, uh, from the last contract, it was eight, eight cents. I think if, if I, if I could, Mr. Chair, just, just to be that, just to be that, that inherently stubborn Frenchman, you know, if, if we're, if we're currently talking about the composition of the pie chart of where the power comes from, right, that we have an energy committee, we have active participants in these discussions, that, that that pie chart should be developed before we take it shopping. Because you're almost making a combination of an economic decision and a principal decision. Again, I use, I use coal and penguins, right? How much coal do I want to buy? How many penguins do I want to save? Somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And I want it cheap, and I want it now, and I want it reliable. <laughs> So in, 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 that, in that mix, that's, that's the real discussion. We can wax eloquently all we want, but people have different motivations for, for the same lights being on. 100%. And if well, the town's going to go out and buy it, we have, we, we have a fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility to, to you know, manage the resources that the townspeople give us most diligently. So anyway, that's why we go through multiple years. And, and for years, it's been very, very good for us. But that composition now, if we're talking about composition of source, I don't know where Eversource buys it all from. Well, well it, but that's what I'm saying. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. There, 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 there are people, there, I would say there's residents that, that feel strongly that they want all their, and you have the option. You could sure. buy 100% solar power. Correct. You just don't turn your lights on at night. Okay. Um, but, well, until Tesla puts that big... <laughs> They have, they, have, they have a big one at Green 18 Mountain Power. Giga, 18 gigawatt battery someplace. But it's but that that being there. said, but that that being said, you're still you're. That's why when we come up with a plan with Colonial Power, you have we will tr we have to do we have to kind of balance all of those. And, oh, and some and some and somebody that wants to burn clean coal right. would would say, I want to just burn coal, so I'm going to go this. And somebody says, I want 100 percent. We'll do you know. Um, solar, they're going to do something else. But if you want a balance, I would think I, we'd go a balance program and, and offer a good price. Right. Right. It sounds like we have Pittsfield has a better price than we're and we're currently paying. Than yes. we're being right. told. Right. So yes, they do. Well, better than Eversource's basic service. Price. Correct. Correct. Right. So again, I want to just have that out there. That's all. How sure. how that how that wheel gets chosen. Yeah, yep. we we're gonna sit down. We'll probably have meetings, and we're gonna have we'll have a basket to choose stuff out of, and, and you try to try to mix it the best, and yep. you try to shop to so to get the most people are comfortable. And, and like you said, no one asks other source right now how they on the basic program. No one asks what's your breakdown of what's your price. They say what their price. What's the price, right? Yeah. Okay. How stable is it? Great. Thank you. And and just let you know, we're probably halfway between Marlboro and Sandusfield. Correct. Give or take. Understood. All right. Thank you, Mark. Denise, well, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Have a safe drive. Well, thank you. You know, I, I remember asking the uh, the mayor of Northampton one time, Mayor Mayor Higgins, about what was the the biggest thing or what she learned the most, and she said, "You know, Tom." She said, when I ran for mayor, I never knew I was going to have to know so much about town dumps. Right. <laughs> do a dump thing. So mm -hmm. I guess I'm going to learn a lot about electricity in the next few months. Mr. Sillen? Tom, um, you guys sound like you've made up your mind on this. No. Okay. Oh, not, we, haven't even, we haven't even talked about it. Right. Well. I, I don't, you know, it's 7.15 now. I do want an opportunity to talk to you about some of the philosophy that goes into what you're trying to do. Some of the pitfalls, and I'm not sure you. Well, no, no. well I, I would hope. Thank, thank you, actually, Will, for bringing that up because I, I would just like to remind everybody that town meeting voted to accept this process. 
that authorized you to enter in this contract. Right. right. Now, I, I personally, and I think I expressed it at a town meeting, have reservations about when you get this aggregate type of thing. You know, I, I just think it's, it's a tough row for us to, and we have enough, we have enough issues in, in picking out people's electricity <laughs> has never been, I have a hard enough time doing that myself. So right. now, now you want to ask to do it for somebody else. I, right. I have a hard time, but yeah, I'd like to talk to you about that. Okay. I just want absolutely. To be included in no, absolutely. Absolutely right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, same topic. Uh, you know, I went to David Pierce's when he was running for selectman, selectman debate or whatever he did with. I guess he was running against Peter Murphy at the time, maybe. And I didn't catch either of your guys' initial run for the selectman. But I don't remember in the Pierce Murphy conversation either one of them saying, one thing I want to do for this town is to get aggregate electricity purchases pushed in. Because sitting on that board of selectmen is going to be so much time on my hands that I'll have nothing better to do than to arrange electricity purchases for everybody in town. And I question my I think I can imagine where Will's going to come from on this, but it's completely different than mine. Which is, I question whether it's even something the Board of Selectmen should be getting involved in. Because, is it really in the charge of the Board of Selectmen to be worrying about where people get their electricity from? For example, are you considering doing the same thing as I've said, maybe an email to you guys about paper products? Mm -hmm. If not, why not? Automobile purchases, if not, why not? You're, why are you bothering to intrude into things that take up your time and really aren't part of the executive function of the select board? I mean, that's just where I'm coming from. That, that's one thing. The other thing is that, you know, I watched the presentation by Aaron uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's pretty apparent that the hope is that nobody pays much attention, and so you end up with a greater percentage of people signing up than would sign up if they had to affirmatively sign up. And I just question whether that's the kind of government you want to be running, where it's kind of like, gotcha moment where let's just kind of go about this uh, this way and you know more people are going to end up in this than would otherwise if, we had, if they had to opt in. Is that really the choice you want to make? And Tom, you were talking about the dog licenses and all the other stuff. I think you'd probably agree that if there was something going on in town where everybody got a mailing that said unless you opt out, we're going to burn your house down next week. If there'd be a few houses that get burnt down because people wouldn't have read that, they wouldn't have paid attention to the robocall, they wouldn't have done anything. Sure. So you're running kind of a little bit of a, a gotcha thing here. And I just don't think that's how you want to be doing things. And furthermore, I think everybody in this room would go nuts if the federal government tried to do something like that. So it's, so it's a philosophic thing. It's different than I think where Will is, is maybe coming from the future. And so I've said my piece and you guys get paid the big bucks if you get to make it. <laughs> I, I, I love to I love to argue and have a discussion with you about this. I'm not going to disagree with anything you said. And and like you said, I know what it's like doing dog dog licenses. You just have to if you if you want a story in frustration, just ask the town clerk about what she goes through every year when she sends out notices about dog licenses. And and that's people and if you own a dog you gotta you know that you have to get a dog license. So and I, I we we weren't a big proponent of it when it was brought to town meeting. Um I I I a lot of people are, are on the base service. That's what they choose. I mean, I go and I look. You know, every year we go look at the the rates, and every if we're on a one or two year thing, we or three years, we look and we try to find. 
but that's not everybody. And, 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 and it's not a nightmare, but, but I, I do think about somebody waking up, you know, some morning and look at the bill and say, what, what, the, what the heck did the town do? With, how do they take my, the town's involved with my electricity now? So yeah, I, I, I agree with you in everything that you just said. I don't, and I don't know if we're best equipped to handle it either. Unfortunately, the process runs through us. The state law was written by, I think the words were energy industry, maybe something like that. And so that's why there's an opt-out function rather than an opt-in function. And I just yeah. ask yourself whether, let's say, oh, I don't know, the car companies got together and they, they it sounds like crony capital is what it sounds like actually. If they got together and got the state to pass the law that said everybody can buy a Chevrolet unless you opt out. I think those are called cafe standards. Oh, what? I think they're called cafe standards, okay. and it happens every year. So, I, I can't imagine why you guys would want to spend your time doing this. Sure. I'm sure not going to be as sympathetic next time you guys are too busy around budget time. <laughs> Good point. Well, well before sure you say anything, but... Rock's point, I just wanted to say one thing, um, reminded me that it's someone's birthday coming up in right. a couple of days that's turning 90 yep. years old. I just, yep. wanted to, I just wanted to wish Dr. Russ Lane. No, no, not you. <laughs> this is Thursday, Rock. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to uh, wish uh, Dr. Russ Lane a, a happy uh, 90th birthday. That's right. It's coming up in a few days. Do but, the experiment where you send out the notice in your house and you burn down. <laughs> 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 yes, Mr. Sillen. Um, for me, it's actually my point is actually somewhat similar to Box. And at the last meeting uh, that you had, I watched it on the, the replay. And David Pierce summed up the problem in two words, and it's negative consent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Translate that: no consent, without consent. No matter. How much education you do, no matter how many rocks you look for people and you know, poke them and tell them, hey, we're gonna do this. Because there is no opt-in, everybody that gets switched is gonna get switched without consent. Mm -hmm. And that puts you in a really bad position, I think. And right. That's my big cautionary and I want to follow up. Thank you. And happy birthday, Russell. You go, do you want do you want to continue now or? I don't know. I, I, I want you guys. To, the process is going to be ongoing, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. We haven't made a final decision nope. yet, and I want to like schedule permits. I'd like to be part of the discussion. Sure. Want to, you know, yeah. Sherry, can you put Mr. Yeah. Sullivan in the meantime? Can mm -hmm. you? I think we're looking at like at a drone level right now. We're just kind of looking down. We haven't we haven't drilled in on it. We're, we're not we have I agree with Mr. Uh, Rock over there. I mean, we haven't we haven't dug into we haven't looked at a plan. We haven't done anything well. So. And. Um, <laughs> we can we can find ourselves in trouble real easy. We don't have to go looking for it. It's just the next just right? the next item on the agenda. Since we haven't done much, let's talk about North Main Street. Yes. We haven't talked about North Main Street at all. It no. seems like it's only been last week or so. All right. Sherry, you ready to move on? You got enough notes on that, don't you? Mm -hmm. One more comment, please. Yes, sir. If you decide to go forward with this, would you make it a very important thing that you put in your selectman's annual report? Yep. Say, we're proud to say that we set up an electric plan where people have to opt out instead of being able to opt out. I mean, if that's something. Okay. We pretty much own everything we do up here. Yeah, I know. Us? <laughs> we, get, we own things that we don't do. So. That, that's true. That's, that, that's a All false right. equivalency, but I hear yeah. you. Yeah. All right. North Main Street. Sherry, where are we, where are we stand? Um, Dan's here to give you an update on his Dan, did you take visit. a walk the other day? I did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> want to come up so we can hear you? Interested yeah. residents. Yeah. Liz, you and uh, Lauren want to come up also? More than anything. Thank you. Well, all right, I'm 
Thanks. Cereal Thanks. still in. Right. Thanks for stopping by. So, is it this is Nancy's. Nancy, 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 Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Nancy helped facilitate all this. Which is, all right, so where do we stand? So we, we, on July 9th, we had a walk up and down North Green Street. I had, Who'd you walk with now? Liz, Lauren, and, and Nancy. All right, so the four of you. Four of us did, did okay. a walk. Prior, right around when we did the, uh, the, the 300th parade, yep. I really wanted to get a handle on how close, the, I get a sense of the trees on North Green Street, so we had a quick and dirty measurement of each of them. And, uh, we, Set me up to Liz and Lauren just to talk about that. She wanted a lot more further away than I thought. I mean, there's less trees impacted. They're very, really close to the sidewalk. So, anyway, so on the night we did a walk, we went up and down, looked at every single tree, uh, up and down the layout. Uh, I, I was kind of presenting a, I'm trying to propose that we come up with a solution that would balance everybody's interest. And, um, okay, so, go ahead. Start, start, let's start from scratch. You to, I got my pen out in a blank sheet of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Need it right here. There you go. All right. So, how does the the last the last that we talked, we were accepting of a 32 foot layout, if I'm not mistaken, right? We were talking about the bike lanes. 30, 30, 30. 10, 10, 10 foot lanes and five foot bike lanes. Right. Right. Well, right. We're, so we're we're talking about that's 30. Two two. Two 11 foot traveled lanes. 10 foot lanes. What's the... Two 10 foot lanes and two 5 foot bike paths. 5 foot children. That, that, that came back from the peer review, right? Mm -hmm. That came from the peer review. I thought he was, what's the peer review? Oh, the, 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 his compromise was the 10 foot. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, all right, so that, that's our, can we call that our base plan? And, and then 5 foot sidewalks. Yeah, the, the uh, remained on this on the yeah. same spot where they ba basically, are. and I, I got to we, we want to talk about those because the, some things were brought up at the the last meeting about do we need to continue two sidewalks the entire length to we to Claybrook? So we get that too. So we, we want all the way to Claybrook. We're, we're we're going to talk about that too tonight. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. All right. So where do we stand right now? Well, I, I guess um, what I'm, I'm hoping that would be able to be just one proposed going forward it would be 10 foot lanes, three foot on curb shoulders, five foot sidewalks, and then in a couple of locations we need to deviate the path a little bit because the sidewalk is close to three foot, pretty, pretty much in the bottom wall area. So you're talking two tens, yep. right? Yeah, with threes instead of fives. Three uncurbed. Ooh. Uncurbed. Okay. Huh? Without curb. Curbless, curb free. And you want to do curb. bike paths of three. And we'll, we'll call in those shoulders. Yeah. What's that now? Yeah. Then, yeah, like it's a. Three foot shoulder to, to delineate a space for people who won't ride on the street. Oh, so you want to, sep you want to separate the bike path from the road? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. It's the same, it's a shoulder. It's a three yeah. foot shoulder immediately adjacent to the 10 foot lane without a curb. Right then, yeah. Change okay. kind of I, I'm, I'm drawing a picture. Yeah, and the philosophical, I guess a little bit of philosophical change. Folks who didn't want to ride in the street would get, would be able to ride on a, kind of a single directional, the same direction as traffic within the sidewalk. And to, and to a little better accommodate that. So I think where we came from was, Liz and I were very concerned about the sidewalks. And I'd say Dan is most concerned about traffic calming and the width of the road. So, this proposal has um, the road essentially the same width it is now, but with a designated shoulder. So it makes it safer for on-road bikes, although not really a full-size bike path, which I think Peter, I can refer to you, Peter and Gary kind of suggested might be okay. And we expand the sidewalks in their current location to five feet so that they can accommodate the, as we call it, the timid bicyclists. Um, and I think we have a feature possibly at the button ball, at, at the button ball because the sidewalk really can't yeah, go yeah. straight through there, but we actually thought we could make a, that could actually be a designation, a, uh, a deviation. Yeah, just well, a deviation, it could curve. be kind of a special yeah. place because people do come just right. to look at they the actually just park right there, yeah. Um, and we, I think, acknowledge that this 
pushes the envelope of what the state would like, but we feel it's kind of in the spirit of what <coughs> is being asked for. And so I think we are offering to help write the exceptions to try to get this through. One other thing, too, is that the sidewalk um, uh, on both sides of the street would end at North Silver, and then it would just be on the west side from Out to North Clay Silver Brook. to Claybrook. Um, it just, it's, it's not feasible to accommodate it. If you walk up there and, and look at right. reality, right. it just, right. it's ridiculous. It's right. particularly, if you have the, particularly if you have the 30 foot layout. Yep. And then we want the traffic calming at North End, you know, the island or some, you know, signal that you're coming into yep. the village that would at some point be echoed at the South End. Mm -hmm. Um, and then crosswalks at North Silver, somewhere near School Street, somewhere near School Street mm -hmm. whatever can be accommodated there. Is there another there's, one? There's, there's one. Playbook, I, and then Claybrook. The last thing I was going to say to Boyd, the current plan requires a MEPA filing, mm -hmm. which I do, very rarely do you see MEPA mm -hmm. filing for roads, but because you're more widening the road, we're thinking of widening the road four feet, you have to mm -hmm. file with so I think pictures speak a thousand words. <laughs> this is what I saw the other morning. And that, that vehicle continued that way that down, down North Main Street. It's just like that, all the way down. Is that by your house? This, was, this is by Yerkovich's curve. But this is, and, and this is what happened on the curve. So Dan was saying that the whole world is about road skinnying diets. road diets rather than road uh, uh, Yeah, I, I know, but but that that was, and, and actually I took these pictures. I sent them to the to the chief uh, with the company's name, um, but that that is just an example of. Um, well, that's not going to change because that's up where the road I, isn't changing. Yeah, I know. Not even part of the play, right? I, I know. That that's that's my. We can't. Uh, I think we can't look at the outlier. So, I mean, we've got to we've got to do something that works for the usual situation. Not for the. I, I don't have I don't have a problem. I I, I agree with the sidewalk, a hundred percent. And looking at it, I just don't see how you could go on the east side it looks be in the road well, not only that but you'd have we'd end up moving the telephone poles they'd have to yeah. move telephone yeah, poles. Island so, and all that stuff. Yeah. so that would that would push it further into for the people that live on that side of the street if we go on the west side like you said i so some vegetation but right i think it, it's it's more it's more doable um, so how far of a, if I could, Mr. Chair, how far of a deviation is, is what uh, you folks walk through different than what the, the peer review engineer sent? They re reduced the, the bike path from five feet to three feet, right? Sure. And, sure. I, uh, and I thought they said they could go to four, but I didn't think they would go to three. I, and, and again... I, I don't have a problem with three. No. I don't have a problem with two. Well. I think it's better than right. just the width of the, the white line now. So. Right. Well, one of the things Lauren found was the um, sort of the principles for the Complete Streets Project program. And I mean, if you read really some of the stuff that even DOT has put out, mm -hmm. um, they are not unconcerned with the character of the street and not changing a neighborhood and all of these other things that I think is what all you know the people sure. who are coming to these meetings have been talking about. So I think that in terms of asking for exceptions, really across the board what we're talking about is traffic calming, which everyone wants in town, and character issues, which is what everyone's concerned about. No one wants to see the character of the street undermined. And improve bike safety. And improve, improve the on-road on bike safety. So, you know, I think, it's, I think we should, we got to give it a try. We can't, you know, I, I feel like we have been discouraged from asking for what we really want. And when we got together, I think essentially we're kind of all, you know, in agreement about what, where we'd like it to be if someone wasn't telling us, you know, oh, I don't think you can do that. 
So, so in in the closing in the closing sentence, Verbito writes, "Roadway will be 30 feet in width." We're looking so. at 26. Okay. Thank you. So so, what what's the what's the the, the mass highway? What is their mm -hmm. roadways are they lay them out as 11 feet, right? Yeah. Eleven. So, so you'd you want an except. So you want an exception on the roadway width and the the bike path width. Well, yeah. The prior, I mean, the, the original design where we had where we had the shared use path, we had eleven and two, so we had the same same width. See, so yeah, I. The difference, the difference in philosophy that the state would have to buy into was that for the passive riders, they could choose to ride on the sidewalk the same direction as the traffic, and you know, and then come back out. Right. That, that would be, and then that, that, that so, happens in other states, right. in other places, and this is a, it's a newer policy for a very rural, I think, I think. I so think you don't think we'd be that. better off looking for, for 11 foot, wouldn't, wouldn't you rather not, instead of trying for two exceptions, wouldn't you rather say, go with 11 foot roadway and the three foot bike paths? Would, I, I mean. Go to 28, you mean? Well, that that would that would give you that would that would, I mean that would maintain your, then you'd be looking for one exception versus two. I, I well, I like the twenty six. I, I trust me, I do too. I'm, I'm, but I'm just trying. I'm just trying to look at. I'm just trying. We from have what push, I have them push back. Yeah, have them push back. Right. I, I from but from everything we've heard from from the guy doing the work and on the peer review, yeah. they say you got a chance for one exception. Two exceptions are very, very But I think if we if we get the they they agree that the, the single direction sidewalk uh, for bike accommodation is, is a recognized because it, it's not even designed in. You either gotta ride the street or mm. they, they're silent about it. Mm -hmm. So I say if they attempt to formally recognize that yes, riding in the same direction as the traffic in the sidewalk is is, is an approach or is, 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 is the way you can, you can design that to happen, then I think that's less of an exception. Which is essentially how the people, people do it now. It. That's what people do, how people really. use the sidewalk, right. which is allowed anyway. Sarah? Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, well, first of all, thank you so much for doing this work. I really appreciate it. I read the letter and it was, all makes a lot of sense. It's the first time it, I feel like that there's been a solution that's really actually you know, a proposed solution yeah. that meets everybody's needs. Because um, so many of us really don't want to see that road wide sure. since it's already a, a, a problem. Um, and I love the, the suggestion of the traffic calming measures. But I want to say another argument for keeping the bike lanes uh, to three feet, um, Main Street is what came up in a meeting some while back. But it's actually quite unsafe it's only a short stretch of road where we'd be putting in a five-foot five bike lane. Right. And it's very dangerous to, to when it narrows yep. down very suddenly. In fact, Gary said somebody on one of his trips had an accident in a spot where the all of a sudden the bike lane narrowed. And um, and so uh, that's an, it's, a, it's just yeah. another argument for keeping the three-foot bike lane on North Main and you know, letting and and yeah, because it's only you know, yeah, is it yeah, alive? because yeah, so it so it ties in better to yeah. what it's kind of nothing like that, nothing quite like that abrupt stop, right? It's like three, 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 five, 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 six inches. Right. What happens? Well, I was I was texting while I was writing. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not against okay. the law yet. So what are the next steps? Uh, Sherry has to contact the engineer and they have to ask for design exceptions from the state. Okay. Easy. I think Peter's going to head up. Peter? Paraphrase, it sure seems to me like we're just the net effect of this is going to mean we don't get the next cycle we, because it's not like, you know, this, they're going to just suddenly say, oh yeah, you guys are right, and so on, and, and, and how this doesn't just end up delaying the process. Uh, well, we have to act fast, so 
So, but, but, and, and yeah, you're looking at $2.4 million that the town would have to come up with. So, and, and, and that's what, and, and, you know, when, when we started this conversation three years ago, yeah, that's three. Um, the idea was trying, was to try not to, not to affect the, the width of the road. And that, that's why we had that combined path on the side that, and, and while that may not have, not have been the best plan the idea was not to try to, not to try to, I, and, and again, I don't, I don't, I don't have problems talking, you know, and asking the state. I, I just, I, I, unless Dan, I mean, you do more than I do, but if you try and ask for two, I mean, we're t asking, trying to ask for two exceptions. One, you're going from five foot bike to three. And, 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 and again, I'm the one that, when I first started talking, I say a five foot bike path down to six inches is not a safe thing. Right. I agree with that whole, wholeheartedly. So I don't have a I don't have a problem taking a bike path to four, um, in in the road to to the ten or eleven, whatever. But I, I just I just don't want I agree with Peter. I just don't want to end up you know missing out on two point four million dollars because we can't yeah. you know, come up with a conclusion. I, I and Dan, you're in the business. I mean every every the peer review. And our people says that you you won't get two exceptions from the state. I didn't see. What I didn't see. They I said didn't that. see. I didn't see anyone say you wouldn't get two exceptions. I heard the first engineer. Uh, I, I heard it pretty loud. I heard the first engineer being reluctant to That's take on the uh, burden of asking for exceptions, and I heard the second engineer propose an exception that he thought. Well, he said that they'd already accepted. Yeah, yeah. but and, didn't I mean, propose to. And again, avoids the NEPA filing. Which is also a time-consuming. It takes some time to do that as well. It's, that goes, that goes away. So I guess it, you know, let, let's run this to the uh, let's run this to every possible eventuality, right? What if they simply say no? Well, I'm sure that they'll say this is the standard design, and this is this is if you want to participate in the plan, this is what you get. Happens. It's called a judgment, right? It's a promulgated standard. What if they say no? Then we either accept. The wide road, right? Well, we don't. Okay, I get it. I have no trouble moving forward with this. I think it makes a great deal of sense, and I appreciate and value deeply the input. I really, really do. But at some point, it's got to move forward. I understand. I understand. And I, I'll do. I'd like to. You know, I'll go yep. talk to the chief engineer. Yeah. Do whatever I can. Totally get it. Peter's got his hand up. Peter, I was just trying to find the. Peter, go ahead. I maybe I just ask you to. I wasn't clear what you were saying about the role of the sidewalks under your conception. And so maybe you could. Me, yeah, I'm just. Uh, I really uh, fight this. I'm not fighting, but trying to find a way to make this work for everybody. And there are some states that allow single direction shared use, and Minnesota is one of them. And this is. So you're saying that basically, the sidewalk on the west side of North Main would be southbound only. Same direction as travel. Southbound only on the yep. west side and yep. northbound only on the east side. Yep. And so what happens to the... For the timid bicyclists. What happens to the young bicyclists? Same oh. ones. That's, that's the, those are that, the ones. That, that, that wants to go down the street and come back. You've got to cross North Main Street yeah. twice. Nothing. Nothing happens. <laughs> so you've got a five-foot bike lane. <laughs> so that's basically just words. I think what we're... I Correct? Think, I think basically you're not going to force it. It just works. It's not. It's not. I mean, my problem is to me, honestly, goodness, it's more dangerous riding on a sidewalk than it is riding on what we got out there now. Okay, and it's more dangerous because people come out from their garages in back. Okay, the, the sight lines are you're blocked often by a building or by some trees or hedges yeah. or something like that until the last moment. Okay, and so you're sort of saying. Fine if you bicycle the way the non timid bicyclist goes around here. I'm not saying racing, I'm just saying you go along at a normal speed. Mm -hmm. The chances of surprise are way higher when you're going on the sidewalk that's closer to the houses, okay, where the person also is not looking. Right. Okay. It's a whole different, you know, you have a whole different level of tension when you're pulling out of the road than when you're crossing the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore, you know, a timid bicyclist, well, you're basically saying, yeah, we gotta, you know, we're gonna have a new sidewalk with nice pavement, you know, and a couple of wiggles 
to accommodate the trees, and that's totally cool. And you go either direction and no problem, and you, you want to call it unidirectional because it makes you feel better, okay? But it's not, okay? And then you got, you know, the people that are cycling because they want to get someplace, and they're not going to use it, okay? So now you're back on the main street, okay? And then we're sort of like, you know, the combination, it's, to me, it's not a, cutting the travel lane for vehicles from 11 feet to 10 feet is not a no effect thing. It, it, it makes a difference. You got, I don't know how wide the trucks are, what are they, eight feet? Okay, you got that much less space. You got two vehicles coming at the same time, okay, it's two feet less, they gotta go, and so the odds are, you know, you're three feet of whatever you wanna call it, I'll call it bike lane, because that's really what it's supposed to be, okay, is getting impinged upon more often by the vehicles, where they're coming a lot closer, and their rear view, and their side view mirrors are coming even closer. Okay, so I just think that there is a 26-foot road is still just a 26-foot road, no matter where you got the line. Now, having a good line and having good pavement right over the edge, okay, man, that's really important, okay? So that because the, having the good line and a good visible line that gets, you know, after a year it actually gets repainted and so on, really matters, okay? But still, if you're you know, you're trying to squeeze it, it still is just 26 feet, okay? It doesn't get any wider by where you put the lane in. You could say, well, great, the vehicle's only eight feet wide, put the travel lane down to nine feet, make a four feet bike lane, and the, you know, so on. Have you really, you know, does that really help? I don't think so. Okay, so I'm just saying, I guess the I mean, one point is that, that the, you know, I have my doubts as to whether the state is gonna say, yippee, sure, fine, and we're gonna move ahead on the schedule we're on, but we'll find that out. The other thing is, um, you know, the old thing, how you, you know, something that, if I was worried about co traffic calming, something like that, you know, the main thing that, the main thing that calms, you know, when I'm driving, number one, you pay attention, you may not think they're pretty, but you pay attention to things that say, you're going this fast and this is the speed limit. Maybe that slows you down. I see more and more of those in my travels. You see more and more of them all over the place. And you see them, and you see them, and they sure seem to work to me. Okay, now you may say, well, it's not pretty. Okay, so we take one and we make a nice little wood frame to it. You know, <laughs> and we take some flowers on it or something Put a like birdhouse on it. With, you know, the way they make you build McDonald's in some towns. Right. You know, you never guess there was McDonald's there. You never see this thing except it flashes at you when you're going too fast. You know, you can do that. And, you know, I, I, I worry about having an island in the middle of the road because you've got a 26-foot road. And now you put an island in the middle of it. Right. Now what are you going to do? Right. You know, where are you going to build a road that suddenly, you know, bellies out, you know, for the length of the island? I mean... Figure out stuff that, you know, figure out a way you can make it look nicer without, you know, putting in stuff that's going to come back and bite you. <laughs> so that's, you know. I mean, I like the time to look nice too, well, but I don't want to. My, 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 only, my only thing is that I, I, do, I, I do think at some point, when, when, when do we say, okay, we got to accept what we're going to, you know, you know. I, I'm sorry, but our last meeting we were accepting a road that was 32 foot wide. 30 to 32. 30. 30. No, actually, no. If you went back to the time before, when we walked out of here, we walked 32. away at 32 feet. Right. The peer review said 30, and we said that's good. But we actually agreed to a 32 foot road. Once. And we went from 32 down to 20. Six. But Dan Six. wasn't there, and Dan is one of the people for whom that issue is, no. you know, D Dan's by issues, the tracks. Dan, you know? Dan's, issues were, Dan's issues were addressed in the first proposal. Dan was part of the first proposal. Dan came to the meeting three years ago. I know. He, he's the one that wanted the, uh, sure the shared bike path. Right. So his, 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 his ideas were taken into account back then. Right, but then so so what do we say to what do we all right? So now we're telling the state we accept 30, when they walked out, they, it was thirty two foot was fine. Now we're now we're at then we then then the peer review said thirty, and now we're at twenty six. Does anybody see any problem? Do you this, is the state? Do you think the state or they're going to say yeah we're going to go with the twenty six when you guys said you'd take it thirty two? I think we don't know if we don't ask. 
asked? We have asked. I, I, I don't know why you guys don't think that we haven't asked. We have asked. I think it was said, and it says so in the in the peer review. But the but what I guess what feels feels a little odd about that is that having looked at the first engineer's report, he made it look like nothing, no exceptions, no option, and then we get a peer review that has a completely different take. And so what once was a no is now a yes. So that leads me to feel as if well qualified qualified yes. He and, and he said you may be able to get one exception. But because you have so much land, and, and there's no extenuating circumstances. He said he checked with the state, and they were willing to give that exception. Yeah, but the fact that he's willing, that he thinks the state is willing to go to a 30-foot road instead of a 32-foot road doesn't mean like, oh, great, then they're probably willing to go to a 26. Well, I think the, the point is that if, if you go to a 25% hearing, and there's still a lot of community discord over a plan, they're just going to say, the heck with it. It's gone. Correct. So what we thought made sense was trying to come to a consensus that at least would allow for a smooth and enthusiastic 25% hearing. And that's, that's what I thought we agreed on. That's why we said 32 or 30 was fine. But he wasn't there. Oh, trust me, I've talked to Dan many times about this. Trust me. I have three years well, I've never been a I see a, I see a sign every day I go home to. <laughs> Except he did take it down for the 300. He did say happy 300. Thank, thank, thank you, Dan. You did take the sign, and you did change the wording on the sign for the 300. Thank you. <laughs> so, and again, I, but but at some, when 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 do we accept no for an answer? Well, after we've tried. We kind of have, but... Well, that's we, what I guess we don't see in writing anywhere, that anyone well, asks... Because you haven't been involved for three years. You've been involved for six months, and then you true, but and, and then you complain that you weren't involved. It's like, well, what can we do? I mean, dog well, let's licenses. Let's not revisit that, if you wouldn't mind. I understand, but, 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 the, but it, it, it's, it pains me because I've been sitting here for three years, and we have had a lot of community input. I've looked at input. all the written reports, and I have not seen what you're saying you see. And that is, I've seen the first engineer said no exceptions, and the second one said yes to one that was requested because he seemed to be considering it to be responsive to what he was hearing in the hearing. I didn't see no to two in, in his writing, and I didn't see that there had been a specific request as to this particular proposal. Oh, yeah. Liz, did you get the, the email from Lou Rubito from us? Yeah. Okay. And the corrected one as well. Okay. So he's got it here is new roadway width of 30 feet right off the bat. So we're asking about something different, and that's okay. I understand what we're asking. Pedestrian walkways, five feet. I understand there's a there's area concern in here and a question about making them one way, and that's something that Dan's bringing forward. Uh, and it is pretty clear in the in the email about it being you know a series of exceptions. One we may have leg on. In his words, our limits were not feasible from this design exception. That's in his email. So again, I think that's important to bear in mind. So, oh, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, project limits say at the side street at this point where pedestrian could safely direct the cross the street and where the likelihood of the sidewalk extending beyond the point, limits may not be feasible. I still didn't hear it. What's not feasible? Well, what are limits just, of what? Yeah. If you don't have it already, you can take that. That's the email from Lou Rubito from July 10th. Uh, maybe the wrong date. I think I'm reading yours. But listen, let's just ask, right? Let's ask. And let's put a timetable on the asking and getting an answer back. And if we ask and we get an answer back and the answer is yes, then we win. Everything, everything's happy. If we get an answer back that's no, then do we accept it or do we simply walk away from the project? That's the question at hand. And, and to tell you the truth, I don't see how... how as a selectman with a fiduciary of responsibility to town, you walk away from two point four million dollars. We've already spent two hundred and seventy-five thousand to get to this point, and we and we don't have and we don't have a design yet. Right. That's appropriated money. That's money in the past. That's a park walkway along the river. If you don't have that, we'll send it. Uh, I have, have, is okay. this the corrected one? If the sidewalk on one side would enter short of the project limit, say at the side street at a point where a pedestrian could safely direct it to cross the street and where the likelihood of a sidewalk extending on the project was not feasible, this may not require design exception. That's 
That's doing the one side to claim one work. Side. That yep. does not require a design okay. exception. That's just okay. So we'll go back and we'll ask to have it 26 versus 30. The only change we're asking for off of what he suggested here was reducing those bike lanes from five to three. 26 versus 30. 26 versus 30. 26 30. versus 30. The only change being and, in the and the no road. sidewalk on the east side north of Silver. Which he says right here yeah, is may not fine. require. May yeah. not even require design. As long as we have a crosswalk at north North Silver Lane to right. get across. Yes. And that's always been in the plan. Yes. So as long as we're all sharing the same information, that was important for me. I want to make sure you you have everything that we have. And what we said, also said in I think in the memo mm -hmm. is that we are willing to take on. Yeah, some preliminary some draft of the design exceptions. And I really appreciate that. I really do. To uh, get out, get the what's important to the town in yep. there, or to the townspeople who've been coming to these meetings. I don't think I, I, I took, same animal, right? Same email. I I, I took didn't see that. that. I, I I saw the report. And Got it. I took that picture the other day, Excellent. and that's that's not an unusual picture of farm right. equipment, large apparatus that use our roads every day. So you're taking, you're going from 10, 10 foot, you're going, well, right now you got a thir basically a 13 foot travel way and you're going to take it down to a 10 foot. I think you're, you're going to, you'll still be, you're, there will be no bike path. Functionally, when you, when, functionally there'll, be, there'll, there'll be paint. There'll be a paint, but you right. will, you will be, so, so you'll have a battle going on between these bigger loads and the bike people trying to use that that thing. So I imagine that what Dan wants, because I think, you know, personally I'm less concerned with the width of the road, but I know that's Dan's concern. We're trying to have a, you know, a consensus. But I'm imagining that your response to that would be that that narrower lane is going to force the traffic to slow move more slow down. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> look. I, I don't the, know. The, the, I don't one, the one thing, the, the one thing that you may not realize is that when you're when you're on the board of selectmen you take very things very seriously i can tell you how the width of a line on a road varies speed between a four inch and a six inch right dan yep. i can tell you what happens if you put a curb there i can tell if you have green there i I've, I've actually looked at this a lot and i've talked to a lot of people so i i I, for three years, have been taught, saying that the most important thing, and, and I, I think Dan and Sarah have been involved with it, they're going to tell you for three years, I've been telling you, that, that traffic calming is the number one importance. So, I mean, you guys are the late to the late to the ball game, but it's been, but it's been, but it's been talked about, it's been talked about the entire time. Okay, so you're not telling us anything new. Why are you so angry? Be, because you, 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 you have a report there. Okay, it talks about 11 foot, it talks about five foot, it talks about exceptions, okay? At, at some point, and, and you, agree, you, you guys agreed to a 32 foot traveled way. I have it written down in my notes in here. Now you're down to 26 foot. Well, we're trying to accommodate those who are the most concerned about the road width and traffic calming. And so I think you have to recognize that those who were present at the meeting were more focused on the sidewalks. And so we're trying to be accommodating. Not, to not me, other. not not the people that were involved from day one. And, and trust me, my biggest concern was the bicyclists, because right now bicycles have no have, have of, of all the people, our pedestrians are at least on on a, a bumpy uh, route infused sidewalk but they're off the traveled way but i i look at bicycle people i watch people riding bicycles and i have a picture right here shows you what happens to them it's it's not pretty and 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 to me when i when i look at you going from a five foot which makes no sense from the state perspective is that you go you're making them go from five feet down to six inches in a matter of feet that makes uh, no sense to me. Transition. Yeah, that makes no that. sense at all. There's no transition at all. It makes no sense to me at all. But that that's what they do. And I and I I'd rather personally I would say I I could accept a eleven foot travel way because I ten and a half because we have the, the lines in the middle. Yeah. It would be six inch lines, which causes people to go slower, believe it or not. Yeah. But I'd rather go with a, a eleven foot travel way or ten and a half with with a three foot bike line. That that makes that makes sense. 
in 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 this world you have to you have to comp you there there are compromises that you have that that there there are compromises that you have to make and i in in but our our point to start the compromise was maybe two years ago not 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 and and we did do, we did do a lot of compromising over the first two years i mean we had a lot of discussions in and, and 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 I don't know if it's not upset. It's frustration. frustration. I Thank you. I do. Believe me. Had I known, I would have been involved. Tom. I swear to God. But I didn't know. What can I do? It's I, I and and I and I, I I just I I don't want to. I I don't. I don't want to start. I don't want to start over from scratch again. I guess that's what I'm saying. So if you want to say ten and three, that's fine. But my, my, I think what I was trying to figure out is what are we going to do if ten and three is not acceptable? Well, I think we just see what they come back with. I mean, then, then. Okay. And we have the twenty-six foot design on paper now. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five percent design that we have on paper is the twenty-six foot layout. And we just have the shaving spell. It's a real quick thing to get submitted. Just write the design exception. But and I, and I guess if we need to get to 11 and 3 and they say, come, be, we'll go with it, then we'll have that discussion. But I, I just be, yeah. Sherry, can can you ask John what what the process is to put ask for the... What's the design exception? It's a design, design, design exception. exception. I, I... He gave us an estimate. Huh? He gave us an estimate for the cost of put, because the okay. plans will have to be revised. And but we, well, but we can't, why this can't, can't, but why can't they just ask the state? Why can't they just say, "Hey, look, we want to go a ten foot wide"? Why do you have to design it? Uh, tell them what to draw, <laughs> as opposed to asking them what to well, draw. Well, I mean, I, the, right? as far as well, as far as process, like, it's Daniel? kind of a big gray box to me. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I'm not I, exactly I, sure. It's but that, wh the why do we navigate? I, I'd love to go to the computer engineer tomorrow. We'll sit, we'll sit down in our office and. Mm -hmm. but this, this but whole why wouldn't he just? Why wouldn't John just go to the? To the district two office and sit down with their senior planner, whomever, and and say, hey, would would, I mean, you don't have you don't have to be a genius to figure that out. Oh, no, you? Well, what I've seen in design exceptions that are submitted is it's a written narrative that explains what the rationale behind the and design it, exception is. It's the other thing is it forces them to explain why, yeah. if they want to, if they want to not allow it. Yeah. That, and I know it's time consuming. I know, and I don't like that you have to. It just seems like the only way you ask the questions. I was going to say, no, we didn't, we didn't have a good local consensus. So they were like, you guys need to figure it out. So yeah, standard sign. It, right. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've come up with what we think is a good local consensus, I think, I hope. Mm -hmm. and we put that to them. We make the case. We see what they say. If they say no, we, we, can, we decide what we want to do. And if, if, it, if it means we go up the lanes and three foot, we we'll come up with 28, or they say you got to have a five and a half foot sidewalk, or Whatever, we don't know that until they tell us. Okay. Cherry, get your walking orders. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got a plan. Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys have been very patient and I appreciate it a lot. I know I, I, I totally acknowledge and accept that I'm just saying frustration because if even for me, the engineering world, it's it's a frustrating process for me too. Well just just remember, I mean you're, you're fighting with the people that are on your side. I know, I know. And, and you know, I, I, you and I have talked many times, and I, I've been a big proponent of, of, of traffic calming, that whole road. Matter of fact, I can't tell you how many times we, <laughs> when we pay, we, I know all our roads are paved in town, yep, they are pretty in much. As of this year. And, 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 and it was, it's funny because I, I, people, you, you pave a road and, and you say, I wish you hadn't done that. And they say, why? And I said, because you're going to be complaining about speed. And and within a year, we get complaints about the traffic speeds. And, and they forget why they wanted it paved in the first place. And they won't ask going, complete streets next round, you can get those flashing signs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, I see them all over. They're just finishing a complete streets on College Highway section of Southampton. And it does dramatically change how things go. But they have one shared lane where they never had a sidewalk, where people used to just walk along the road. And it's a remarkable improvement. 
and this, but there's places where it's really narrow to I agree. Yep. And just, and it's just in the construction. And it ends. You get right to the intersection. You get right to the intersection of Palmer Middle Road and College Highway, and it goes, stop. Original. It's what they're doing on Route 9 and Hadley. I understand. Now. Same thing. Peter? I guess I'd just like to say that here's a, you know, something being done and talk about a consensus and so on, and there are like five people sitting out here. And the only reason I came tonight was because I just, I sort of got in the habit of looking at the agendas when I came, when I can remember. You need to stop and I that. I saw this and I said, hmm, I wonder what they're up to. Right. Um, compared to the last time that the room was full, and it may have been full with sort of the, you know, friends of the same crowd, mm -hmm. but it was still given a fair bit more publicity, like we're having a meeting of press, you know, North Main Street reconstruction, and you know, if interested, come along. And I see this, and it's like, well, we got a consensus here about how to go forward. And it's consensus of, uh, you know, just I don't have to use more than fingers on one hand for people sitting out here to talk about how broad that consensus is. So, you know, I'm being a little bit point some different stuff out because I just, you know, it's anytime you got something like this, you need to make sure that mm -hmm. I know enough people in the room. Look, we look, we just try. So if you all I could have said was we try to listen to what people are saying. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe next time that you know, okay, so now you got another meeting, and you know, two weeks or four weeks or six weeks, and there's news from the state, and then how we're going to react to this, and so on and so forth. Can you put something front and center on the web page so that yeah. you know it's, it's more obvious it's going on, so that people who want to can at least be more likely to come. I agree with that, Peter. One thing I'll take away from one of the last meetings at North Main Street is that we have a wide breadth of a wide breadth of information exchange opportunities from postcards handwritten in my mailbox to don't ever text me again. <laughs> so, uh, somewhere in the middle, we make sure to get the word out, but I appreciate it. I really do appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Great, right, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay, Board of Selectmen updates. Mr. Bergeron? Uh, tomorrow is what I hope the final uh, meeting of the Frontier Regional Capital um, working group the goal tomorrow tomorrow's meeting is at 4 30 and that is to ensure that there's a policy recommendations that can be brought forward to the frontier regional school committee meeting as they go about with voting uh for the coming year now they're not voting any funds or anything like that the question is what a recommendation to adopt a policy recommendation for things to bar potentially borrow for recommendation for some definitions and let's see what the school committee does with that uh, that said against the backdrop <laughs> of, of the retirement of the, of the business manager uh, and I'm sure a more than overwhelmed interim superintendent but at least he boats at the meeting for 430 and he wants once that wants that to happen I think that's a good thing the first time I ever saw a letter of resignation that stated the amount of vacation yeah and all of it it was that was a Every I dotted. I've never seen trust. a letter of resignation yep. quite like that before. I was also uh, <coughs> not quite on the selectmen's updates, but I would say this is something that is an extension of the CPA effort. Uh, tomorrow, after the meeting at Frontier, uh, there's Riverside Cemetery trustees are meeting downstairs. The first pass uh, for. Um, information gathering from the landscape architect that the CPA folks, the CPA mm -hmm. and the town folks have uh, put up the money for for uh, the uh, 40, 60, 100 year plan for the cemetery. So if anybody's interested in that, that's downstairs tomorrow night at uh, 6.30. And again, that's gonna be with landscape architect. It's not that that cemetery trustees group works in a vacuum, but it's a relatively, uh, we have a relative, we, anyway, Tomorrow night, there's an architect downstairs to talk about roads, stones, layout, trees, stuff. The first of the inside meetings, at which after that, there'll be a series of public hearings as part of the CPA process. So again, I know that was a crossover, but that's also happening. Okay. Um, I, I, would, I, I would like to uh, just add about the uh, we, we just so everyone knows we do have an interim uh, superintendent for a year if it does well um, his potential staying on is full-time I believe correct uh, we are looking for a, a business manager now um, so that that that'll be probably already started the, the process there's a, there's a, a joint school committee meeting tomorrow night okay. the deal with that including some Beyond that, I don't know what the status is as far as lining somebody up, but we'll find out tomorrow. I, 
I, um, I, I, I read a, uh, a, a very interesting <clears throat> piece in the newspaper tonight, um, and it was about um, someone um, telling the towns of Franklin County that they better be listening to what the state is saying. Mm -hmm. And in, in particular, they're talking about the sustainability of education and the model that we presently use. Franklin County, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the western part of the state. Rural part. Now, the, the one, the, the, I, I guess I've never, I've never really been tempted to write a, a, a letter to the editor. I have, I've never acted on it, but. I'm really close to taking pen to paper and saying, I'm tired of Boston telling us what we should do. And, and the fact is that we have, we have spent a boatload of money from the state trying to come up with a better, and, and we've had great minds, some of the best minds around, look at the way education is funded, and, and not only education is funded, but about how Franklin County, in particular, um, governs its schools. And we have not, to the best of my knowledge, I have never seen a plan put forward that combines all the schools or whatever that actually has saved money. Correct. I haven't seen that plan. Um, and, and, and I would say it, it's easy for the state guy and they, they and, and the, just an article was is basically you should listen to what the state is saying because they may come in and just tell you what you're going to do well to tell you the truth i i don't i don't have a problem with the state telling us what to do because right now i don't think i don't think we in in franklin county in particular have a population of seventy thousand people um and i forgot we got was it seventy thousand acres, or it's a huge? Our county is is a huge area. I remember one of those studies, if I could, Mr. Chair, mentioned that of all the student population of all of Franklin County equaled that of the city of Chicopee. Okay, that's fine. But again, with, with all of the with all of the trappings associated with land mass administration, transportation, all of that. But again, I think from a scale perspective, that resonated with me early on. I'm like, ooh. Anyway, and it's true. Or, yep. or, and, and, and they say, well, you got seven superintendents. We have right. seven, and, and it's like, okay, right. So we have seven superintendents. Or so you replace you replace a school system with one superintendent, and and believe it or not, you probably end up with seven assistants, assistants or, or uh, some. Right. I mean, right. I don't know what chicken Other layers. So you just, I don't know. You what just pull the layers down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. But every everything that we've always looked at, mm -hmm. we've never been able to save money. Correct. I I guess. Peter, since you're here from the school committee, I would take that to the school committee and say, hey, look, this was in the paper, okay? This is what, was it the, not, I don't think I he can't was, remember who it was, but I, I read. But the person article. from the state was with the uh, secretary, uh, it was it was assistant secretary, an assistant secretary to the secondary school education, the I believe, DNA, had right. said it. But my, my comment would be, my comment is, is like, well, what would you propose? Because we have looked at we have looked at regional, county wise, we we share, and, and again, correct me, Peter, but I believe we share purchasing now with with a lot of the with all the other the other school districts. We 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 belong, the frontier belongs to Lower Pioneer Valley Collaborative that 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 put together. We do our a lot of our special education is done inside Union Thirty Eight Frontier, I believe now. Right. So, and, and and a lot of these other schools are doing the same the same thing. So I, I you know, we we're part of the uh, the 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 Hampshire Collaborative for the um, um, health benefits you know, are done. You know, which was better than the GIS, and they told us we had to join GIS right. unless you can right. prove that you're going to better plan. And, it was an easy proof, and it was an, <laughs> it was an easy proof. So, I, I I'm concerned. I'm very concerned about education, the funding of education, 
and and I'm kind of tired of being a second class citizen in this state, or our area being a, is considered a second class, mm -hmm. and 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 I mean you can go and you, and you can go down to the cost, you know, look at some one of the other the communities are paying. We 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 pay our per student cost is one of the lowest in the one lowest one third in the state of Massachusetts, but they want to do something different. Mm -hmm. What would you like us to do different? I mean, we already we're already in the lowest one third. Why are why are our students why are our students in Western Massachusetts considered less less worthy than than kids in the, the eastern part? And and I'm sorry, but a lot of the money a lot of the money goes that that that's generated from this area goes goes to Boston and 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 this Marlboro and mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. I'm tired of that. I and I think we we need to start fighting back. I yeah. I. I, I, that, that, that article got me tuned up before I came to this meeting. Yeah, there was an interesting Saturday workshop, I don't know, two or three months ago over at GCC, and they talked about the, uh, the current funding uh, foundation formula and the penalties that small towns actually have with that because the cost, the bridge for cost of attendance and the formula ends up being weighted in many ways to larger, more wealthy communities. And it's fascinating because you have to make up the minimum, right? So you have to make up the minimum. Well, if our minimum is lower than it is somewhere else, and I'll, I'll name a, you know name a community, it starts with Newton, right? Pick Newton. I pick on them for whatever it is, and their 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 foundation budget uh, requirements are a little higher than ours, but the gap is greater, so they end up with more state aid. It's like, wait a minute, how does that work? That was one of the pieces that this this working group has been working on. Again, formulaically, it's not necessarily exclusive to the solution being more dollars. Formulaically, it can simply be the formula. Anyway, I digress. But it was an interesting piece of that Saturday morning. I remember when Education Aid first came in, uh -huh. and it was like virtually impossible to understand. Right. Okay, and it was, you know, pretty much everybody was squawking because one way or another, everybody came to a region where squawk why they weren't getting their fair share. Sure. Sure. But partly it was also nobody understood it. Right. And it changed, you know, a reasonable amount over the years, but it's still like, you know, I can't say that people are happy with it or people that, you know, understand it and understand how, you know, they come up with the numbers they do and what matters and what doesn't matter and so on. It's just, it's still a bit of this black hole. There's a working group out of uh, Warwick, Bernardston, and they're, they're putting together these numbers in really stark visuals. Right. And it really becomes eye-opening when you go, you're kidding me, right? right? It really does operate, and that's just the way it operates because it's the system, the formula, the way it is. It's pretty right. eye-opening. You know, I'm, I mean, I'll just talk personally now. My own sense is that, uh, you know, you pick your battles. Right. And that's a battle for people that are, you know, got more experience in dealing with Boston and that sort of stuff and so on and sort of my battle is okay given whatever the givens are in terms of what sort of funding we're getting from the state under what sort of conditions uh, you try and do it so that you're running the school as well as you can and keep doing it better and when there are costs that you look to see what the opportunities are first thing always is can we get somebody else to pay for part of it Okay, and so we keep making sure we're as smart and that sort of stuff um, as we can be. And I know Sherry is, you know, works along the same sort of idea that, you know, let's see what we can get from the outside to help fund the stuff that we really, you know, that we have to do, regardless of what the state is saying. Um, I, so I, I, I just, you know, there are, you know, we got a member of our committee, um, uh, Keith McFarland, who is much, you know, has been, you know, interested in exactly what you're saying and he's been to meetings with legislatures and so on and so I you know from our committee's point of view we've got a committee member that is definitely following up on that sort of stuff because he you know he's the same point of view like mm -hmm. man this is just getting killed yep and well, we get killed by the charter school stuff and we get you know and all that stuff isn't right but you know that's a long road to go down to actually get something changed well, one of the reasons I, I I did bring it up is is because I, I read that article and in a few short, in, in we, 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 there's a lot of things that we have to sign. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we signed the warrant for the, the uh, primary elections that are coming up on Tuesday, September 4th. Right. Now, 
we have seven candidates that are running to replace Steve uh, Kulik. And Steve Kulik has done, you know, 25, 26 years, wherever it is, yeoman's job uh, uh, in the Boston legislature. And I, I do say Boston for a purpose because um, St Steve has to, Steve has to travel um, a long distance to, to run in the next state representative. In Boston, you may have to walk two or three blocks to run into the next state representative. Okay, but but in a few in in a month and a half, two months, we'll be voting at a in a primary. The Democratic primary, because at present time there's no Republican. There's seven candidates that are running. There's five, last I think five, mm -hmm. running for state senate. One on the ballot, yep. three or four, four that that are that are writing candidates. One of the reasons I hear why people don't vote is because there's no choices. Well, I would assume that this year with seven in the the House of Representatives and, and five in the Senate. state Senate, they were probably going to get 99, if not 100 percent participation. <laughs> it's because of, of this. In, in, in look, Scott and I and David and, and past selectmen in the town of Sunderland, we, we watch the news in Boston more closely than a lot. And, and we get it. OK. Um, but because we're, we kind of live it in our position. But I'm telling you that this election matters, and and when you hear people, um, Assistant Secretary of Education or or whatever the position I don't remember what it is right now, telling us in Franklin County that we better do better or we have to come up with a better way of doing things, we we need effective leadership in that state house. We need we need and it's an and it's our opportunity and I'm 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 putting it out there. That get to know the seven candidates. Look who's look who's running. What do they stand for? And 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 you know it, it's important on global warming and those other things. But look at what they're talking about for local issues as well. And 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 they're, they're the people that are going to be representing. That's going to be representing us. And I I really think that you, that we need we need effective leadership. And 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 represent not say leadership but representation and I think it's it's so critical because in a few short years we may be told or they may attempt to tell us that we need to uh, do something and, and again it's just what I said in the, the, the article tonight that we may have to look at um, changing the way we, and, and I'm and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just tired of being a second-class citizen we're already we're already in the bottom third of what we spend on education per student now so I don't know how we can change that much. But. And, yeah, and we're reminded of that during the, our own budget process because so much of it we end up fending for our own. I and 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 you know I I would I would say over the years um, we we probably work closer today with our school committee and and the administration mm -hmm. than we've ever worked with mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. and and it, and, it, and it's and it's happened over over time, but and and. Peter Peter goes back a long time, and and it, he can probably tell you it was a lot different 30 years ago than it was now. I actually think that I have hope for Darius, mm -hmm. new superintendent, because I think he gets that need that we have to have closer relationships and the value that you get from a closer relationship uh, because he's been involved in the district for some time now and. Um, there was no better, as far as I'm concerned, Marty Barrett was an amazing superintendent and because she lived in our community and, and she, she, she listened to the people, she listened to her neighbors when she was a, not even outside the district um, and then she became the superintendent so she heard and she understood and, 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 I, and I agree with you Darius, I see him, you know he coaches in Amherst with his kids and 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 I think those are kind of people that are important to our to our community that that they give back in their community. And Darius, one of them. But we we need to do we, in my opinion, um, and again it goes back to the election. Get to know your five cent state senate candidates. Get to know your seven uh, house representative, and 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 talk to them. Go go to their. You know, I saw Natalie the other day had an ice cream social where she was at four or five different places. 
go and talk to her. Go and talk to to uh, Kate. Go and talk to to. Uh, we, there's a, another uh, Nathaniel is is down. I think on Pine Court. You, you know, talk to these people and and find out what they're they're about. So it, it is so important. I think. Anyways, sorry for digressing, but I, yes, I Peter. One, just one other thing, and it's a different subject, but it's still cool. And that is, I just it's another actually involved another elected official here locally, and uh, which is our town clerk Wendy. And what I wanted to say was that in, we've got a meeting tomorrow night of joint school committees to deal with the need to hire new business manager of the schools and. Uh, they were scrambling last week to figure out, you know, what night could we get a quorum, you know, what did we need to have on the agenda, you know, all this sort of stuff and so forth. And when it came time to post it, it was like, you know, I got a call at like quarter of 12 on, or about noon time on Thursday. Now I got a call and I was not in Sunderland, I was a long ways away from here, okay, but I get a call, I barely have service and, you know, it's sort of like, you know, what can you, you know, Town office is, you know, maybe I got an after staff at 12 and town office, is, town office is closed and we got to get the thing posted by, we can do it on Friday, but you're not going to be open on Friday. So, you know, I left a mess, you know, I tried to call there and all I got was the answering machine. You know, is there anything you could do for us? I said, yeah, I'll call up Wendy at home. She's great. Okay. <laughs> she's been a town clerk for a long time, but she's always been wonderful. And so, you know, I said, well, you know, what's her number? So I said, I said, well, you know, look on the, okay. Pull up your computer, look on, you know, do a search. Wendy, I said, I didn't know the number. You know, do a search. Wendy who will send it. I said, I told her about how old she was. She said, oh, there's one. I said, yeah, call her. I just, just says, you know, tell her, you know, if there's any way she can do it, she's got to get this meeting posted. And I got an email back a couple hours later. She says, thank you. And this is from Donna Hathaway over there, the superintendent secretary. She says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Your town clerk is awesome. She said, she said, no problem. I'll take care of it for you. Lunch and and I'm it's, you know, it's a ways. very small matter, but it's those sorts of things that, you know, really, you know, really indicate sort of the town you've got. You know, when somebody says, yeah, yeah, I'll go out of my way to do something for you, no problem. And not only that, but does it, you know, no problem, don't worry about it. You know, that's, I was really, I mean, I, thank you, Wendy, uh, <laughs> that was really cool. So, anyway, I just thought you guys ought to know. Appreciate it. Thank you, Peter. Town Administrator. Um, I think we touched on uh, just a couple of things um, for the Riverside Park project. Um, I did submit a request for a waiver from the um, dig request. Yeah, we're going to give it a try um, and see what happens. The um, ground has been previously disturbed, which we know with the wastewater treatment plant and the sprinklers. Um, we also had Carlos revise the plans to take the trees out. Um, and I think, I think he said it was about 12 inches. He took some photos of, he did some, a um, couple of bores Five to seconds, show yeah. them um, what we would be doing. So um, I overnighted that um, information to them today and hopefully we'll hear soon. Good. And then uh, for the complete streets project, we did receive the plan from the surveyor. Uh, I've sent that off to the homeowners. Um, we'll be looking for a couple of easements there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we can finish up the sidewalks um, on that project. And the bus shelter, um, I contacted PVTA. Uh, we're looking for a location for a bus shelter that um, might be a better location than the one proposed. Um, so they're looking at potential sites and they're supposed to get back to me on uh, sometime after Friday. Nice. Good. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Let's see, minutes of 7, uh, July 7th, uh, July 3rd. Uh, I'll move the minutes as July 3rd. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We have a minutes approved, 2-0. Uh, consultant agreement for missile aggregation management services. That's, That's the contract. That's on hold until next week, right? Yeah. Okay. Next the meeting. Yep, yeah, the next meeting. Recommendation for supplier services. Yep, that's the one that uh, I mentioned. Our supplier services right now um, are with Public Power, and that contract is up in December. Mm -hmm. So the Lower Pioneer Valley um, went out to bid uh, for us, and we received quotes. The low at this time is IGS Energy. Uh, 
We're looking at a 24-month contract is probably our best option. Mm -hmm. That'll give us some time to figure out what we're going to do as far as aggregation goes. Um, so we wouldn't put the town office buildings in until mm -hmm. after that contract is okay. up. Um, How does that match with our current price? <laughs> our current price is um, 0 0.8815, mm -hmm. and this one is 0 0.10090, so it's 20% up. increase. If you go to 36 months, it goes to 0... Uh, point zero nine eight three zero. So the, m the longer you go out with the contract, mm -hmm. the better the prices. Are we coming off of a three-year, Sherry? We're coming off of a two-year. Two-year, twenty percent increase. Is that something we budgeted for? We do. We have our. We, we have, our, have the numbers to budget for. Yeah. We just got these. Do we go? Do we go level with the budget this year versus the upcoming? Um, we have I some have play in the energy line because of the solar project mm -hmm. too a little bit. So um, we can certainly budget for it a little bit more next well, year, next yeah. round. But I think we'll be fine. I think hearing what we heard tonight as part of the aggregation, that process, if it takes. It's going to take a while. A when, when, do we, when, when do we have to make a decision by? The thing with this is, every time, the more we put it off, yeah. the more the price. Right. Yeah, right. the prices, they priced it out for us on June 14th, and then again today. And, um, and the three year was 893? <coughs> yeah, it was the uh, three years is uh, 983. Yeah. By the way, it's double digit increase. I know. But you, no look at, you look at the price of fuel right now. Right, 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 right. That's what's driving it. Yeah. Uh, uh, that could be sixty, seventy thousand dollars over the course of the over the course of the contract. Oh, the contract yeah. absolutely yeah. Scott. Seventy, eighty thousand dollars. Going for a two year gets us at one oh, then it gets nine nine eight. There's not a tremendous amount there. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Year. Uh, move to enter into a two year agreement with these folks. Titan Second. is it Titan? Uh, the, it's actually IGS. IGS, I'm sorry. IGS. Okay, motion made, seconded. Uh, I. 2 0. Okay, Hadley Road complete streets project yeah, update. Yeah, we just talked about that. Um, that's right. the plan. Right, that I see the drawing here. Yeah, good. Uh, in uh, motion to uh, sign the warrant for the 2018 state primary. So moved. Motion made, seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Hey, we get the vote in the state primary on uh, September 4th. Nice. All right, anything else? That's all, Mr. Chair. All right. Motion Next. to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. See 2 you. 0. Declare us out at 8 30. We're back on the 30th, FCAT. <laughs>